Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember, Context is Everything Media Network founder and CEO John Michael is reading a book. This is a self-help book, and we're entering this section of it. So we've so far read Dissolving the Ego, now we're in the Realizing the Self portion of the book. So at the beginning of this Realizing the Self portion of the book, nature of divinity, self, and truth. This is a longer section with 48 tidbits about this topic, the nature of divinity, self, and truth. Different terms are used to describe ultimate reality, with energy fields vibrating at the highest levels expressible in the physical domain on top of infinity. Ultimate reality transcends dualistic understanding. This chapter offers Dr. Hawkins' descriptions of the non-linear, non-dualistic nature of all that is and its related qualities. Everything merely exists as it was created, complete and perfect. Everything fulfills its purpose by merely being what it is. Everything is the fulfillment of its own essence and potentiality. The only requirement of anything for anything that exists is to just be. Its density, its destiny under the conditions of any given moment is already completely fulfilled. Therefore, that which is that which it is represents the completion of all past possibility up to that very moment everything is the way it is supposed to be as essence fulfills its potentiality it is witnessed by a corresponding level of consciousness in any non nanosecond in uh, of observation nothing is actually changing what is changing are the positions for the witness and the point of observation change is merely a process of sequential perception. Life can be pictured as a series of stop frames, like a flip book from childhood. This poses a conundrum. It is the world that is moving, or is it our mind? That which is ultimate and eternal transcends, both objectively and subjectively, and is beyond awareness. It is referred to in the ancient spiritual literature as the Supreme Spirit. Out of the Supreme arises all that is manifested and unmanifest. All consciousness and awareness, all existence, all that is, either form or non-form, all that is linear and all that is non-linear. All that arises out of creation, all and all possibility and actuality. The supreme is beyond existence and non-existence, beyond beingness or isness, beyond all gods, heaven or spiritual forms, beyond all names or definitions, beyond all divinities and spiritual denotations. It is out of the Godhead that divinity arises, and out of the Supreme arises the Godhead. Because the ego deals in form and definition, it cannot comprehend the self, which is beyond all form. But without form would not appear, but without form... Because the ego deals in form, and definition, it cannot comprehend the self, which is beyond all form, but within form, but without form, would not appear to exist. In reality, there is neither subject nor object. Therefore, there is no relationship to be explained. There is absolutely nothing in ordinary human experience to compare with the joy and presence of the love of God. No sacrifice is too great, nor effort too much, in order to realize that presence. 
The self is the presence expressed as existence, and out of that consciousness arises the sense of existence. Please subscribe if you've made it this far. John Michael, a context is everything, says thank you. The r to understand the nature of God is necessary only to know the nature of love itself. To truly know love is to know and understand God, and to know God is to understand love. The ultimate awareness and knowingness is the presence of God. In the presence of God is peace. That peace proclaims infinite safety and preservation, that infinite projection. No suffering is even possible. The radical reality is that to understand the essence of anything is to know God. In reality, everything occurs on its own with no exterior cause. Everything and every event is a manifestation of the totality of all that is, just as it is at any given moment. Once seen in its totality, everything is perfect at all times, and nothing needs to be external, needs an external cause to change it in any way. From the viewpoint of the ego's uh, personal, uh, positionality and limited scope, the world seems to need endless fixing and correction. This illusion collapses as a vanity. Like springtime, a pro the promise of a new era in man's understanding of God is emerging. Now the level of consciousness of mankind is high enough to be able to recognize the truth of God, of love, instead of worshipping the punitive God of guilt and hate. And this calls to mind something from when I was a teacher. I was a Catholic school teacher. Uh, that's the mug from the Catholic school that I taught at for four years. As a Catholic school teacher, I was teaching biblical studies at some times. And the story of Abraham and Isaac, Abraham bringing his son Isaac up to the top of the mountain to sacrifice him to God. Let me get to it. Trust me, I'm getting to something that's related to what I just read. God says, don't kill your son. Don't sacrifice your son. No more blood will be dropped at my on my behalf, God says. And you know what this was? This was a test. It was a test that God gave to Abraham to see his faith. And when Abraham passed and showed that his faith was strong enough to sacrifice the most beloved thing in his life, his son, God realized God was proven. It was proven to God that humanity was capable of a deeper faith. So deep that sacrifices of the greatest, highest order would be made. And God realized this is a human evolution, not of the body, but of the spirit. A spiritual evolution occurred, and that's really the beginning of the Jewish faith, which started with Abraham. Am I wrong? I think I'm right. But it started with an evolution of human faith, human spirit, through faith, the human spirit. And that's what they just said here. Literally what they just said. I'll reread what they said. Now the level of consciousness of mankind is high enough to be able to recognize the truth of God and of love instead of worshiping the punitive God of guilt and hate. That's what they just said. I just said it in a different way, relating it to the Bible. Am I right? I don't know. That which is reality is beyond all form, and yet intrinsic to it. Let form reveal its own nature. There is no need to seek it. The actual essence of form is formlessness, as paradoxical as that may sound. Innate to the presence of the infinite, timeless un, uh, knowingness that illuminates all possibility beyond all uh, opposites is causality. 
revelation presents itself as self-explanatory and obvious. Huh. Self-explanatory. Hopefully that didn't stop recording. Revelation presents itself as self-explanatory and obvious, the essence of all truth. The totality and completeness of knowingness prevails beyond time and therefore always pr is present. One reflection of this is the capacity to comprehend the incomprehensible by the self-revelation of its essence. Therefore all stands revealed. The unmanifest and the manifest are one and the same. Truth is radical subjectivity. With the collapse of the illusion of duality, including the supposed reality of the separate self, there are, remains only the state of the infinite I, which is the manifestation of the unmanifest as the self. There is no division between creator and that which is created. All is self-creating as the manifestation of the mind of God. This great awareness characterizes the consciousness level of the seven hundreds on the map of consciousness, where self is all that is. Because the universe is self-evolving and self-fulfilling, no intervention is necessary. All is in perfect balance and harmony. The ultimate truth is beyond isness, beingness, or any intru intransitive verb. Um, intransitive verb. Any attempt at self definition, such as I am that I am, or I am, is redundant. The ultimate reality is beyond all names. I signifies the radical subjectivity of the state of realization. It is in itself the complete statement of reality. The infinite power of divinity radiates down through the levels of consciousness like sunlight in the forest. It sustains all life. When deprived of the power of light, consciousness reverts to its temporary illusory substitute called force. Force is limited, whereas power is unlimited. Therefore, the end is certain, as force cannot stand against power. And without the infusion of power, force may, it, by its very nature, expand and extinguish itself. With the expansion of knowledge and including to include the nonlinear, non-duality of reality, it will become stunningly apparent that the most profound, radically scientific statement that is possible to make is, in fact, Gloria in excess Deo, which is Latin for something about God. When one realizes that one is universe, complete and at one with all that is forever without end. No further suffering is possible. Note that both God and all references to the divine are capitalized in this book, and that of all the possible pronouns, only I is capitalized. The individual I can only be aware of itself or its existence as a consequence of the greater awareness. This is the innate quality of the divine I, which is its source and the focus of spiritual search. As such, it is thus nonverbal and the source of experiencing, witnessing, and observing. By analogy, one comes to realize that one is the water and not the the fish. What is the water and not the fish? 
One is the water, not the fish. I'm not sure what it means, but I like how it sounds. If you like what you're hearing, if you like how my voice sounds, barring the clanking of this microphone that I do admit to in this episode, it doesn't happen normally. I'm just trying to get a little bit more comfortable, you know. Please subscribe. Thank you. God bless. Note that both God and all references to God. Okay, yep. By analogy, one comes to realize that one is the water and not the fish. The self is self-aware beyond the senses. Divinity shines forth as a massive revelation. Its a, a obviousness is stark and forceful as a radiance. Its essence is certainly and, inf uh, and infinitely, totally, and completeness, finality, and totality. All searches have ended. God is all present, simultaneously as manifest and unmanifest, as void and allness, as visible and invisible, as potential and actual, as the expressed and the unexpressed. Unexpe it is important to realize this, that which is of God brings peace, and that which is not of God brings fear. The infinite potentiality of the manifest becomes the actuality of the manifest by the will of God as creation. The self is the awareness, its source, its completion, its totality, its fulfillment, its essence. It is the reality of reality, the oneness and allness of identity. It is ultimate I-ness of consciousness itself as the manifestation of the ma unmanifest. Thus, only can the indescribable be described. Amen. Complete surrender to God unveils the truth. Nothing is hidden. Only the ego is blind. Reality lies just beyond the mind. Out of the fear of becoming nothing, consciousness denies its only reality. That is everything. The infinite everlasting allness out of which existence itself arises. When the self dissolves into the self, it is experienced as a great expansion from limited, transitory, and vulnerable to immortal, infinite allness that transcends all words and universes. As such, the self is not subject to death or birth, it, it ex as it exists beyond temporality. The obscurity of the self was the re result of merely misidentifying perception as representing all reality. The mercy of God is infinite and, uncon and unconditional. Life is spawned by the light of divinity, which is the sor ultimate source of all existence. In this unfoldment, consciousness is the agent. Life is the radiance of God made manifest as the universe expressed through revolution. We are both the product and the witness of creation as a continuous eternal process. The infinite glory, greatness, and power of God has been se uh, severely and glossary understated and not comprehended by man. With the replacement of self by the self. With the replacement of lowercase self by the uppercase self, the power of omnipotence is known by virtue of the fact that the infinite is one's source and reality. There's no limitations to God. The source of all life and all form is, of necessity, greater than its manifestations, yet it is neither different from nor separate to any degree. There is no conceptual artifact of separation between creator and created, as scripture states, that which is, was, and always shall be. As scripture stated, Abraham, the evolution of the spirit, be the water, not the fish.
My name is John Michael with Context is Everything Media Network. Thank you. God bless and goodbye. And also, please follow me at my other channel here if you'd like to stay in contact with me because at any day, I can be taken down for copyright because I'm reading other people's books.